Are you struggling to grow your email list and keep it profitable? Yeah, well, you're not alone. The good news is that there are some simple and effective methods for building your list that you probably haven't even thought of yet. Want to know what they are? Stay tuned and find out. Being an entrepreneur sounds like, yes, another new client. I did it. But it can also sound like, I am really not understanding this technology. And I'm feeling so overwhelmed. Am I even cut out for this? That's why I started the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast to help infopreneurs, coaches, and course creators who want to build a business online but are battling technology, overwhelm, procrastination, and even imposter syndrome. Think successfully, think differently, think bigger, and take action by learning tips from an array of business owners, all dropping knowledge on the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. Check us out at www.darkhorseschooling.com. What is up? What the heck is up, my Dark Horse friends and family? Let's get right into it. Here's a question for you. And obviously, I just started you off. We're going to be talking about some email here. And if you're an infopreneur, a healing coach, a course creator, or a service-based entrepreneur, I believe you already know that growing and maintaining a profitable email list is essential for the success of your business. But... How do you keep your list growing and engaged? Well, you know what? I'm going to get to that in a moment. Let's go for the other side of it. Let's say you have an email list. You already know that you have to continually add new subscribers to keep that list profitable, right? Yeah, I can feel you're shaking your head out there. Now, while some customers will buy from you forever, and God, you have to love those folks the most, right? Others are not going to buy at all. And... Others, they'll buy today, but not tomorrow. Or they change their email address. Or they just simply lost interest. Yeah. The good news is there are some simple methods for building your email list that you probably haven't thought of. Yeah? I searched high and low online to see what the email experts out there are saying about building an email list faster. And to my astonishment, I realized that there are several things I should have been doing all along. Now, I want to share those things with you. Now, I've gone and started implementing some of those techniques, and I've already seen the results in my email list. So, I want to share those with you, as I just mentioned, and... Drop the email value bombs because maybe if you aren't doing these, you can start seeing some of the growth that others have seen, myself included. So let's get to the start here. Number one, encourage subscribers to forward your emails. What? Yeah, right? How simple is this one? I remember doing this many moons ago when I first started building my very first email list. And we're talking back in the 90s here, (laughs) right? I actually had uh, two newsletters. One was focused on public speaking and the other was focused on personal development. And one of the ways grew really fast back then was by asking them to share it with those that they felt would benefit from it. Wow. Somehow, I forgot all about this as I started rebuilding my list here in the past few years. Now, I'm adding a button to each email that says, email to a friend, right? You add this to the bottom, you include this in the call of action, you know, maybe with a subscribe button. If this email was forwarded to you from a friend, click here to get your own subscription for free, right? It's like that tell a friend thing. And here's the thing. When someone forwards you an email, someone you trust, right? Do you take a minute to review it? Yeah. Are you more likely to subscribe as a result of it? 100%. All right. So this is a powerful one. I want to mention that one first. Now, there's a handful of these. There's actually 17 of these in the last couple of them. You're going to be surprised about what they are. Okay. Anyway, so let's continue on. Number two. Revive an old email list with an opt-in campaign. Now, I've had a couple of older email lists. Yeah, maybe I haven't shown them as much love as I should have and seldom sent emails anymore because, well, let's be honest, the response simply wasn't very good. So here's what you do with those. You create a series of fun emails to send out, each one promising an awesome gift if they re-opt in. 
And then also tell them if they don't want to, no worries. They'll be removed and, uh, you know, that's how the campaign ends. This is a great way to reignite an old list. I find it's working. It's getting people to raise their hand again and tell me that they're still interested in the niches that I'm emailing about. And once that campaign is over, well, then I can get rid of that old bark of my email tree. Here's an even better benefit. Your email deliverability goes way up. Yeah. Yeah. All your email providers will love that. Okay. Number three, let's add some Easter eggs. I love this one. Let them know at the beginning of an email, this is sort of an Easter egg hidden inside the email. For example, you could have hyperlinked a word that leads to a surprise, or maybe the first word of every line spells out a special URL. It really, if you think about it, the, the possibilities here are endless. And maybe you include a little picture that's a clue to what the Easter egg is. You do this on a regular basis and people will start to get excited about your email. They'll open them more often just to find those Easter eggs. Oh, and by the way, they'll end up reading your content too. Yeah, which is really, really what we all want. Number four, create some new lead magnets. Man, how old is your lead ma You have one, right? Yeah, okay. So how old is it? Yeah. Now, you could use some of your major blog posts. You might want to hold back some of the content and offer it in the form of a lead magnet. Ooh, there's a good idea. Hey, do you want to know how I finally convinced an affiliate to spend $10,000 of ads for my product? Right, this is too hot for me to publish online, but I can give you private access to it if you just tell me where to send it and drop in a space for them to put their email address. Yeah, right, you'd love to have that one, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's a good one. So you create something like that for your niche as a new lead magnet. Now, I would hazard to say you probably want to refresh your lead magnet every few months or at least rotate them through. If you have one that's really good, you know, and you switch it up to another one that's even better, there's that fatigue factor that's out there. Oh, everyone's seen this. Well, not everyone has. But if you certainly say, hey, I'm getting ready to pull this down and don't know when I'm bringing it back. <laughs> Think about that one. There's that scarcity tactic. All right. So think about that. Number five, create some free online tools. Any tool that is fun, super fun, and makes your reader's life a little bit easier can work to get you new subscribers. Instead of charging them, just give them free access via email. All right. Go do a little quiz. Here's something I've seen a man called her a mentor. She's focusing in on moms because she's a new mom, and she sent out a quiz. And it was a kind of quiz that, you know, it, it makes you think about, what kind of mom am I? What kind of stress am I having in my life? What kind of this? Which will allow the person taking the quiz realize what kind of help they need. Do I need it over here when it comes to work? Am I stressing about my home? Am I stressing about my health? Am I stressing about my child? All right, where is my major stress at? Which allows her as a coach, a new mom coach, focus in on where they need the help. And it allows the person receiving the email to realize, oh, wow, this is where I need the help. All right. So create these free online tools. Number six, just create some unique email content. Well, this one almost goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. If your emails are entertaining and informative, and like those Easter eggs, then people will look forward to receiving them and even reading them. I have a gentleman whose podcast I haven't listened to in far too long, and I started listening to it many moons ago, but I started getting on his email address when I first started listening to his podcast. And he had a daily podcast. I'm not sure if he still has it now, but he still sends out his emails. And they go out every single day. Now, I don't read them every single day, but I, when I do start opening them to catch up with them, they're short, right? They're short and straight to the point, but they're very entertaining and they're very informative. And when I finally do sit down and, and catch up on his emails, I read them, catch up at least once a week, and I'll read all seven of them. If I haven't read them all week, and maybe if I just skipped a couple of days, one or two or three, I'll read one or two or three of those emails. So every single email that you send out should provide some sort of value. Right? Maybe it's just a lesson learned. Hey, I just went through this, and here's what I learned from it. Maybe you can learn from it too. And it doesn't always have to be information either. You could simply make your subscribers smile. Give them a little giggle, make them laugh, tickle their funny bone, just to let them know you're human. Just reach out there, make that human connection. 
ask their opinions as well. All right? Now, number seven, and I talked about this in yesterday, yesterday's, yesterday's episode, and this is what yesterday's episode, finishing off the digital marketing for beginners email episode, made me think about all this that I'm giving to you in this particular episode here because I didn't have enough time to share everything I shared with you yesterday as well as these ways to build your email list. So here we are. Number seven, segment your email list. The more specific an email is to a recipient's interests, the more likely they are to open it and read it, right? Which is what we want. You can segment your list by any number of things, demographics, psychographics, you know, interests of the recipients, buyers, non-buyers, male, female, age range, you know, all these things. For example, let's say you sell some weight loss products to a wide range of people. Well, you might want to segment that list by age and gender. Why? Okay, think about it. You're going to sell a different weight loss product to a 17-year-old female than you are to a 56-year-old male. Think about it, yeah? You can segment the subscribers you already have by sending them, say, I don't know, a quick survey or a freebie or an offer based on the results. If you sell to people who want to make money online, for instance, you could segment your list by people interested in driving traffic, those that would rather make videos, those that are into social media marketing, those that are interested in email marketing, so forth and so on. Those that want to learn how to do a podcast, right? You can segment your current subscribers by offering them specific things like a free cheat sheet or getting more YouTube views or a specific method of driving traffic. And those that respond to them, well, then you clearly understand they're interested in in that segment or send them a survey and simply ask what topics they're interested in and of course you want to be sure to reward them for taking the survey all right halfway there number eight let's do some contests yeah i think i mentioned this one a couple times before i haven't done this in a while i need to do it again but i can tell you for a fact that it works right host a free giveaway that requires contact information to be entered well, the key is to give away something that only your dog audience would love. And for example, if you're in the investing niche, right, you can give away the hottest book on investing via Amazon. And you can figure out what that book is by going to Amazon and finding out. So now all the work's been taken away. And then you can promote your contest on social media, you, you know, Twitter, Pinterest, whatever platforms you happen to use or that you know your core audience is at. Number nine, Let's get that CTA button at the top of your Facebook business page. This one is just too simple not to mention. Ugh, I haven't done it yet. I'm going to do it again. I had it up there and I pulled it down as I changed some things around. And what's really nice about this one is you do it once and you're done, right? Just add the call to action button to your Facebook page and it takes visitors straight to your landing page. Offer them something special while you're there and they will opt in. There you go. Easy peasy. Number 10, sharing newsletter previews via social media. This one made me think for a minute because I'm getting ready to launch a newsletter. And here's what I'm going to do. Here's a little clue for you guys. You're my podcast fam, right? Is a lot of the content that I'm turning into a podcast, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do the research and build the content. And I'm going to release it on the email version, the newsletter version first. So that said, if you go to the website, www.darkhorseschooling.com, and you'll see down there at the bottom, the sign up for the newsletter, all right, there'll probably be some new wording coming out here in the next day or so. So perhaps by the time you have listened to this podcast, it'll already be there. If not, it'll be there shortly. That will tell you if you want to get the newsletter information before it goes public in the podcast, and we're talking about weeks before, then sign up for this newsletter. There you go. Now, you can create posts that showcase either snippets of your email newsletter or several enticing bullet points of what subscribers are discovering. People hate to miss out. When they see that others are getting all this information for free and they are not, they will be desperate to join. No lead magnet required. It actually is kind of a lead magnet because you're telling them, and in my case, I'm telling them, look, I'm going to be delivering you some amazing value on the podcast, and you're welcome to listen to it at your convenience. 
If you'd like to get that same information a lot sooner, weeks sooner, and maybe get ahead of your competition, get ahead of the crowd, get ahead of yourself, then go sign up for the newsletter, www.darkhorsecooling.com. Check it out. Okay. Number 11, add a gated content to Facebook. Promote content in Facebook posts that require special access by submitting their email address. Or if you already have a great reputation on social media, what you can do is you can put the word out that subscribers are getting early access to all products like podcast content or a new product that's coming out. Right? So think about that. Okay. If you have a Facebook group, add an email to the onboarding of your Facebook group. Make it so that they're required to share their email address. There you go. Number 12, let's add outros to your YouTube videos. I do this. Go check them out. Okay. YouTube offers the option for video creators of adding end screens is what they're called or video outros for the end of each video. Encourage your viewers to click the link in the outro to go to your landing page and sign up. This works especially well if the video is entry-level content and the lead magnet is advanced content you're offering to take them to the next level on your list, right? It's kind of, you feel it's just all kind of blends right together. Number 13, let's ask for feedback on your website. People love to feel important. Plus, you really want their opinion, don't you? When you ask them for their advice, for what else they would love to see on your website, hear on your podcast, or see on your videos, you make them feel good. Ask them questions. Collect their email address so that you can follow up with them. All right? Number 14. Shorten your lead capture forms. Yeah. I was guilty of this one for the longest time. I want your first name. I want your last name. I want your, you know, Social security number. I'm kidding, of course. The less information you ask for, the more likely it is they will sign up. For example, if you ask for their email address, they are far more likely to sign up for whatever it is you're offering than if you ask for their name and their email address. If you're asking for their mailing address and their phone number, they're even less likely to sign up than if you just ask for their name and their email address so shorten your lead capture forms right i think you know just asking for their email address if you can do that is okay if you need a name and i'm a big fan of name because it allows you to put some personalization in there you want to just ask for their first name right this first name is a, is a tracy and here's my email address bing bang boom gone done okay number 15 guest blog on other websites. This is still working, ladies and gentlemen. Do not think this is dying out because when you guest blog on other websites, you have a killer offer at the end of your post, right? And you can find out if you can place that offer in the text near the beginning of the post as well by whoever is running the website that you're guest posting on. But you just say, hey, here's my value. And you deliver the value and say, if you'd like to learn more or here's what I'm offering to help you with this problem even further, and you give them that link that sends them right to that little landing page, and you ask for their name and email address. That's it. And then you deliver, bing, bang, boom, man. You are winning and skinning. Number 16, last two here. Place the newsletter reader reviews on your sign-up landing pages, right? It's one thing to say your newsletter is great. It's a whole nother thing altogether when your readers are telling the world how wonderful your information is. Let your happy readers speak for you. Okay. So on that sign up page, put some of the quotations that you're getting from those folks that are emailing you going, Oh my God, thank you for this information. Here's what happened, right? Love John, whatever. Okay. And finally, number 17, partner up with someone in your niche or parallel. Here's the thing. It doesn't have to be a direct competitor. It can. There's plenty of business out there for everyone. But you find people who are in your niche, but perhaps not in direct competition to you. Perhaps they're just competition adjacent. Get them to send out emails promoting your newsletter and you do the same for them. Right? Reciprocity 101, ladies and gentlemen. 
choose just one or two people, not a whole bunch, just get one or two and get started. If you do one per week in two months, you should see a real increase in the size and the activity of your email list. Then you can consider, do I want to add more to this? Do I want to back off or do I want to step forward? All right, here's what I want you to do. Choose one or two of the 17 methods I just mentioned here, and please go back and re-listen to them, okay? And then start implementing those one or two that you chose now, like right now. As soon as you're finished listening to this, say I'm going to do number seven and number 17. I'm going to start doing those right now. And then today, take action. With consistent effort, you will see a real increase in the size and the activity of your emails in just a few weeks. And then when you start seeing that, that's going to motivate you to try a couple more of these tips and put them in action until you have all 17 of them working and grinding and building your email list for you. All right. All right. So don't forget to check out our next episode, which is going to be those 10 page tweaks that will massively increase your conversions. And with that, I'm going to leave you as I always do. Think successfully and take action. Thank you for listening to the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. How do you know this? Thanks for tuning in. Check us out at www.darkhorseschooling.com. All right. My name is Tracy Brinkman.